Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I said earlier this month that I was going to spend December painting whatever I fancied and just having some fun doing mad stuff. And then I didn't. Instead I started painting, you know, cavalry and starships and stuff like that, not terribly far outside of my usual wheelhouse. So I thought finally what I would do in the last week before Christmas, let's paint some feudal style guardsmen. Now this dude here is from Reptilian Overlords. He is a 3D print, but I'm going to talk a little bit about other places you can go to to find parts for your own conversions. And I will mention at the end of the video too, where you can find some licensed printers if you do want this dude specifically. So as ever, the paints will be listed in the description below. Along with a few alternatives, this one does use quite a few different brands worth of colors. We're going to go through my whole collection here. But without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now let's talk quickly about the miniature itself. This fella here, he is a resin 3D print using parts available from Reptilian Overlords. But it is actually super simple to get a similar effect using plastic kits. Uh, you don't have to feel as though you're hamstrung if you don't have a printer. I'd particularly recommend either the Free Guild line from Age of Sigma, uh, the Human Oathmark Infantry, they're a pretty good line for that too. They've got lots of these cool sellet helms and such. And then it's just a case of finding a, a rifle, you know, a laser gun, if you will, and converting that onto the miniature. It's not too difficult, especially with plastic. But personally, I think once you've bought a couple of boxes to convert up an army, the printer might be cheaper, but <laughs> that's up to you to decide. If you don't have a space where you can keep and use a 3D printer, then of course, use whatever's available to you. But on the painting side of things, I've begun by giving him a prime of leather brown from the army painter. Uh, mostly because if there's any areas on this dude that I miss, uh, brown in the shading is going to work just fine. So we're going to try and paint from the lowest parts of the miniature and paint up. So they were always painting in such a way that we are adding layers and tidying as we go. So I've got here tanned flesh and I'm using this instead of something like Bugman's Glow because this has, this is slightly lighter and it's got a little bit more red to it, which when we shade this later on, that's going to behave a little better under a dark brown shade. As you can see, I'm going to get up under his helmet and we are doing the face and skin now because if I make a mistake and I splodge onto his helmet or what have you, we're going to paint that later. So let's add, oh look, see already marks there. You're probably going to need two coats. But let's come back and have a look at this fella once this stage is done. Now to carry on our trend of painting from the lowest layers, we've got to look at his trousers. Now for this, I'm going to use medium gray from Vallejo, which is a wonderful beige. Carries on the grand Vallejo tradition that some of the names just don't translate terribly well. But you'll see it covers extremely nicely, and it's really just off-white. Uh, if you did want to stick to Citadel products, then something here like Rakarth Flesh will work quite well as a base coat. But for this fella, I want slightly lighter trousers. This is a really good linen color. Now I don't think you'll ordinarily hear somebody say that is a lovely shade of beige very often. And if you do, they're probably painting miniatures or renovating British homes. I lived in about six different places in the UK and they were all various shades of magnolia, which I always thought was a polite way of saying beige, but there you have it. But we are going to add some color now. And for this, I'm turning to Avalanche Sunset. With these big poofy sleeves, because I want the inner, like the under sleeve, up to his arm to be yellow, we're going to paint the whole thing in yellow. Uh, when it comes to painting the ruffle parts over top, uh, I'm going to use a brighter color. I'm going to use quite a bright red. So this yellow is actually going to help us as a base coat there. But as with most of these yellow colors, you'll probably find two coats will be necessary. Now Everland Sunset is quite a muted yellow. It's more of a mustardy sort of color. And when we shade it, that's going to look fairly dark. So what I'm going to do, I have here some aerial yellow. If you want a brighter yellow, apply it now before we do the shading. Now that's four coats of yellow so far. It's really up to you if you do want that bright yellow. Patience will be rewarded. This will look cool when we're done. But my goodness, it is the one slow part of this model. 
What we'll do now is move on to the fluffy parts of the sleeves, and I've got too much paint on my brush. This is Evil Sun Scarlet, but whatever color you're going to use here for the roughs, just paint that over the top of your yellow now. Same as with the yellow, I do suggest a lighter color here than you're going to expect once it's shaded. And there we have it, the secret to puffy sleeves. Paint the hard to reach parts first, make a mess, and then tidy up with the higher color. Nice and simple. Before we get to painting the metallic details, there's one last color I want to add, and that is going to be for the wood on his rifle. Now I'm using here, this is beige brown from Vallejo, and there isn't honestly a color quite like it in the Citadel range. Now, Steel Legion Drab will be the closest, if that's what you like. Of course, you could use a darker brown if you want a darker finish on your wood. It is up to you, but I'm going to paint pretty much everything. I'm not worried if I hit the metal stuff. Quick coat of this. And jobs are good. We can move on then to some of the metallic details. Now, because I want quite a dark, grungy metal, I'm going to use Lead Belcher. You could even go as dark as Iron Warriors if you wanted to for some of these areas, but it is really up to you. So I'm going to paint in this male skirt, things like the respirator doofer thing that he's got on his pack here, and his helmet. And some of the details on his gun while I think about it. And then, after picking a few spots to be silver, like buckles and what have you, I've got here some Balthazar gold, and we're going to apply this to... Well, it's not a very good gold color, but for brass and bronze, this is a wonderful base coat. And we will apply that to some of the detailing on the weapon. I did finally notice that on this grip here, this is actually a little bit of cloth, so I just went back to my medium gray and tidied that up. What I've got now is some black grey from Vallejo. Now, this is basically Eshin grey if you want to stick to Citadel, but I tend to find the coverage on this is a little better. And that's important because I'm going to do in these hoses around his respirator. One color we haven't really touched on yet is that leather brown primer, and that's because it's going to fill in for most of the leather brown. <laughs> so I have some leather brown, just to say it a third time, and I'm going to tidy up any of the little mistakes I've made while painting the rest of the miniature. So fixing up buckles and what have you, uh, correcting any little mistakes on the trim. Away you go. Let's just tidy up any of the leather brown that I want to stay leather brown with leather. <laughs> I need to be stopped. And once you've tidied up most of that, there is another color that I want to use to add a little bit more warmth and change up some of the leather equipment. So I have here Mahogany Brown, and this is a wonderful red leather color from Vallejo. Uh, a close one to this would be something like Doom Bull Brown, or uh, maybe Night Quest or Flesh. Uh, but I think you'll see from the coverage, this is why I prefer this one. Now as pack, of course, you could paint in with a, a fabric color, uh, something like a khaki or Steel Legion Drab or whatever. But I like little leather packs as well. This pouch on the side here and his belt. Let's use the same here. Now finally, for any little cloth bags or pouches, I have some Steel Legion Drab. And once you've done this, any last minute cleanup or what have you, go back to those original colors. And you can tidy up any little mistakes that you might have made. I tend to find the leather brown is really the last stage where I need to worry too much about that, but if you do find any little extras that you might have missed, just tidy them up before we move on to the shade. So once you're satisfied, you've got all of your cleanup done, it's time to move on to the inevitable Agrax Earthshade. And we are going to apply this generously over the whole miniature. Now, just while I'm jabbing this over this dude, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you to everybody who's been with me through the year. Uh, it has been a long year, and even if, you know, those folks who are here all the time, leaving comments, uh, liking, all that sort of stuff, whether you are a patron or someone who is just here to enjoy what I'm doing, it really makes a difference. It does make it worth doing these videos. So I do want to take the opportunity, come near the end of the year and Christmas, to say thanks to that. Uh, now, more importantly... Make sure you're jamming that into all the recesses. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, let's come back in about half an hour and we will see what this dude looks like when he is all finished. Not finished, 
when a shade is dry, goodness me. And then once your shade is dried, you'll have something that looks like this, which, frankly, does the job for me. You could, as always, just base them up and put them on the table like this, but why stop here? Let's just have a little more fun. I've got some Monster Brown from the Army Painter, and I'm using this because there isn't really a direct equivalent in the Citadel line. Uh, something like Bane Blade Brown might be the closest I can think of, but it's not really a perfect match for this. I'd say... Because of the way that the Army Painter has a very similar method of base color, shade, and then highlight like Citadel does, most of these colors are designed to highlight a specific one. So in the case of Leather Brown, we're going to highlight with Monster Brown. Now that's one run of leather done. Now ironically, when it comes to the other leather, that redder color, Tanned Flesh is actually going to be our best highlight color for that. You want to be fairly sparing with this, because if you do add a little too much of that, it's just going to look like skin, and we don't uh, we don't want our leather gear to look quite like that. But just a tiny wee bit of this at corners will help sell that red leather look. And then on the subject of tanned flesh, let's highlight his skin. For this, I'm going to move up to Cadian Flesh Tone. I tend to find that this works a little better over tanned flesh once we've given it an Agrax Earth shade because we get a slightly smoother transmission transmission transition rather uh, between that dark tone and our highlights. Because of the way his helmet is positioned, it's a little difficult to show you on camera, but that's most of his skin painted. I'm going to go ahead now with a little bit of Kislev flesh and just paint in things like the back of his knuckles tip of his nose, and if I can get in there, his chin, but I might just content myself with his cheekbones. While it might be difficult to make out, at the stage where I've painted his face is ordinarily where I would stop painting and just put him on the table. Faces and faces. But let's keep going. I'm having fun, and might as well carry on for a little bit. So for the red on his sleeves, I have here some Troll Slayer Orange, and I'm just going to do little bitty flicks of this at the corners of these folds. Troll Slayer Orange will look absolutely horrendous going on, but it does tone down as it dries. That'll give you a nice crisp red. I really like that finish. Now, I quite like the grubby yellow finish on the sleeves, but it's not for everybody. And I do want to highlight them, and if I just highlight over that, that's going to look a little peculiar. So here we have some more Aerial yellow because apparently I like the pain. So let's tidy up the sleeves one last time. And then I've mentioned before that I prefer a bone highlight on most light yellow than a yellow highlight. It doesn't tend to look quite so washed out to my eyes. So I have Ushapti bone and I am just going to do a little wee bit of this right at the edges of his cuffs and anywhere else I want that sharp line. Now, wouldn't you know it, but as well as for his sleeves, that actually works fairly well for his trousers. I think under ordinary circumstances, I probably wouldn't bother highlighting those. He's just got such funny spindly legs, though. <laughs> I'm going to move on now to some Liberator Gold, and with this we're going to highlight the brass color. Now, if you want this to look more gold, then I would suggest instead highlight it with a little bit of Retributor Armor, which is a base paint, but it will tie into the uh, color that you've used and make it look more gold. Whereas with this, you'll see, we get a nice brassy finish. And then the final highlight we're going to apply is Chrome. This comes from the Vallejo Model Air range. Uh, it comes perfectly easily off of a brush as well. And this is so bright. So I thoroughly recommend, make sure you haven't got much on your brush at all. Like just wiggle it off on your, uh, on your thumbnail or something beforehand. Because what we're going to do, instead of tracing straight lines along all of the edges of our highlights, I'm going to use the edge of my brush here to get a little bit of shine there, and then tilt the other way, and sort of flicky, just very lightly touch in a random shape to get a bit of scratching and dings. I'm going to do that in a few places, so his helmet's going to be another fine candidate for that. But yeah, go around now, and anywhere that you want a little bit of crazy bright shine, apply that chrome. 
So finally, with those last couple of details applied, he's ready to have his varnish. Now for this, I am going to use a matte varnish. I generally use Vallejo's matte varnish spray. And yeah, I'm quite pleased with how that's looking. So let's go ahead, varnish him up, and we'll get a look at him once he's got his base applied as well. And there at last, our Feudal Guardsman is complete. Now I've had a lot of fun doing this. I usually do when painting something so far out of the ordinary. And I think that if you are looking at Warhammer 40,000 or similar games as a means by which to explore a completely insane science fiction future, then feudal aspects and medieval methods and all that sort of aesthetic ties really well by lunging it forward 40,000 years or so and having some fun with it. The pageantry and the color and the madness of the uniforms and clothing of different periods throughout history ordinarily, ordinarily rather, translate very well to skipping forward because they look out of place. They don't normally fit the context of what we think of as a science fiction setting and in doing that, it gives you something new to look at. It gives you a different perspective on that setting. And I really like that. So worth pointing out as well is that if you don't have access to a 3D printer, there are also licensed printers worldwide for Reptilian Overlords. I will link to that page in the description. So if you want to pick up some of these parts, you can do that even if you don't have your own resin printer. Otherwise, check out some of the boxes I mentioned in the early start of the video because you can go nuts. <laughs> there is no right way to create feudal guardsmen. And I think you'll have some fun digging around the boxes available out there and going to town on your conversions. So once again, thank you very much genuinely to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment and all of the patrons who are genuinely keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support lets me do the mad stuff like this. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.